Hello, good morning. I'm Cindy Crawford, your host of the Health Matters Show, where we talk about a lot of issues concerning fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome. Now today, we're talking about balancing life with fibromyalgia. Boy, think, boy that's almost an oxymoron. Uh, balancing life seems like it ought to be for people in control people that are healthy, people that have the world with a tail. Well, guess what? When you have fibromyalgia or CFS, you've still got to balance your life, and it can be really, really tough. So if you go to the website today, I really want to encourage you. First, you'll see my funny little lady there trying to balance all the balls in the air. Now, she looks happy. But I think sometime when we're sick and trying to do that balancing act, we're not happy at all. And you'll be able to comment. And I really would like your comments. I know it's easy to just jot something off on Facebook or Twitter. And I appreciate all of those too. Don't think I don't because I do. But if this blog is going to have the impact all over the world that I would like it to have and that maybe you'd like it to have, we need to comment and keep things going. So today, let's talk about balancing. And this is going to end up being a tip series. So today, we've just got tip number one. Let's take it slow and easy, and let's look at one tip at a time. All right. What is balance? Well, balance can seem really off when you're sick. Balance can be uh, an almost an unattainable objective. I'm pretty well. I'm darn well. I consider myself healed from both fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, and several other illnesses. And this morning I got ambitious. Now you may think I'm not very well dressed up, but trust me, I look a lot better than I did about an hour ago. It was early morning, and my pond needed some care, some early summer care. Some of the, the lily pots needed to be moved up. Uh, some needed to be fertilized. Um, just general stuff to do. But a pond is slippery. Our pond is deep in spots. We fixed it so that it has like landing spots. So there's a landing spot I can get in on and stand. Slippery. Oh, so slippery. It's plastic, a rubber type plastic liner. And that rubbery plastic gets slip with, slippery with all of the stuff that happens in a pond. And then you step down a little bit more, and then a final amount. I think in the lowest spot, it's about 30 inches. Well, <laughs> I didn't fall in this year. I have fallen in other years. But I get, it, it's just so treacherous to do. And I think that's what balancing is a lot. No matter what, how important your objective is, how badly you want to do something, whether you're ready to risk the slime and muck of life and just trudge through a task, you still got to keep it all in balance. So I did a couple of things which were smart. One, I did it when I, before I took my bath, okay, so I could afford to get a little dirty. I did it with my husband. Well, not actually with him. I had him be home while I got in the pond. And he could have at least called 911 to get me out. And, or if I'd have fallen and gotten hurt. Okay, and then, I mean, I was just super careful, realizing my own limitations. And that was my balancing story for the day. Was I absolutely perfect? Did I look like a graceful swan getting in that pond and then climbing out and whatever? Absolutely not. It probably was very laughable. Mary Tyler Moore would have been pretty... Uh, happy to have featured it on her show or maybe America's Home Video, Funniest Home Videos. But the point was I was able to do it. It was something that meant a lot to me to get my pond in good shape for the summer. I want my lilies to bloom. I love my water lilies. 
I love my little fish. I have a great accumulation of fish. I want to help the environment. So it's important to me to get in there and work with my pond. So that leads me to tip number one about balance today. That implies that you're on sure footing or solid ground. Well, I had to be sure my ground was fairly solid. When I put my feet on it to balance, particularly on the slippery surface, when things aren't exactly like you'd like them to be, you better be as sure of your footing and have it be solid ground. If you're not feeling well and you're having a bad day, bad week, a bad month with fibromyalgia or anything of that nature, that component of balance may not be there. You may have no sense that your life is solid and that you can count on it. It just may not be present. So, let's see, let me look at my notes here. I gave an example in the text of today's post. The blog posts are, of course, on the website, and then you can catch the audio right there if you like, but of course it's on iTunes too. So either way you catch this material is fine. You may feel wobbly and swimmy headed. It's not that unusual to get up and feel just kind of out of it. You know, where where is the world? Is it over here? Is it over there? Is it in front of me? Oh yeah, okay, well, it seems a bit out of focus. And it's almost you, you gotta almost squint your eyes, you know, is is that really real, you know? And and all of this can, can be such a mental drain that you end up with a headache. Well you just get I mean, it's just so tired. What why is it worth it to, to even try? Well whether you're catching a railing as you're going down a set of steps whether you're go, you know, kind of leaning from chair to chair across the room, whether you're looking for where the couch is, you know, so that you can lay down. I think you've got to do what you've got to do to, to get yourself oriented for the day or after a nap or after you've overdone it for the day. You, you, you still got to be balanced. You've still got to take it slow, slowly. How about that? Slowly. Take it slowly. After every activity, every step, be aware of your limitations. And they may only be temporary limitations, but they're present. They're the present limitations you're dealing with. Tomorrow you may be great. Tomorrow you may be half. Tomorrow you may be three quarters. In the next hour you may be half. But right now, you're dealing with the limitations of this moment. And they don't have to be permanent. That's why they shouldn't be scary. All right? They're just the limitations this moment. So what you don't want to do is push yourself too hard at a time like that. That's the time to step back. Literally, physically step back, but also mentally Come back within yourself. Step back. If you need help, ask for help. If you just need some downtime, I'm sorry. I've got to go lay down. I really would like to be involved in this family dinner, but just save me a plate. You know, I'll catch you for dessert maybe. If I'm well enough, you know, I'll get up and have coffee and dessert. Um, if everybody's going swimming, well, Come back and, and we'll share your good times, you know. I'll put on the suntan lotion where you got burnt. If you do more than you can do and you don't respect this need for balance in your life, you're going to pay dearly for it. And I don't want you to pay dearly. So, that's it for today. Please comment and leave your own tips involving balance. Life balancing with fibromyalgia. All right, thanks a lot. We'll have more on this later.